this is Mary Jane from Hayes Sewing Machine Company in Wilmington, Delaware. And as part of our video series today, I am going to do a June Taylor Quilt As You Go project. It is a uh, tote bag. We have them in two styles. We have the Sophie tote and we have the Alexandra tote. Nice. I like this. Today I will be putting together the Alexandra tote, but just so you know that any of the techniques that we're talking about here today can be used with any of the quilt as you go projects. When you open the bag, you are going to pull out the batting and you're going to notice that the batting is all marked. So there's a marking for the actual project and then you will also find let me just grab them that there are markings for straps and the nice person that cut this out actually cut out the little <laughs> label and pinned them so don't cut out the project and then discard make sure you cut out these straps you will need them In order to make it a quilt as you go project, you need to apply the backing before you do any sewing on the top, which sort of seems counterintuitive, but makes sense once you get started on the project. So I'm gonna give this a nice iron, a good press because it is going to be the backing of my project. So in this case with the tote, this will be the lining. Okay. And all of the cutting instructions are um, on the pattern. So it'll give you the cutting for the straps, the backing, and all of the strips. I used a jelly roll with this pattern. The jelly roll was perfect. I already had the two and a half inch strips cut when I opened it and I could use them in any order that I wanted. And I knew they all coordinated because it's a jelly roll. <laughs> Cheater. <laughs> I like to use a 505 spray. I just do a couple there, nothing crazy. And then I lay the project right on top. Give myself a little room. I'll be trimming it back later. Give it a nice smooth because you don't want any wrinkles in the bottom as you're sewing along. When you stabilize it like this, you have a better chance of your fat of your um, quilting not shifting or moving or everything or anything. You have a nice stable base. I will start sewing this, and it is pretty much like a paint by number: one, two, three, four, five, six keep going. So let's get started on that. I should, but don't, use pins. <laughs> um, I, because it's all laid out for you, I really do just take the fabric in an order that I find pleasing, and I will lay out my strips. The number one strip always, always is face up. The number two strip, which I'm going to switch to my blue, is always, always face down. I am using a, I just happen to have a Microtex needle in here. I think that you could probably use really any needle. You don't necessarily need a walking foot unless you find that your machine is having a hard time um, traveling through these layers. Then you might want to try a walking foot. 
I also am using just very um, generic color thread. I tend to always use either grays or creams when I'm piecing. But remember, depending on what your lining color is, you will see this thread. So if you have black as your lining, then you <laughs> do not want to use, say, white thread. I mean, you can, but that's what I'm saying. I have on a quarter inch foot today. I do not, thank you, Pam. I do not um, like to use a foot with a guide because you'll notice as we continue out with the quilting, we're going to be traveling over other pieces of fabric, and I'll show you why I don't enjoy the guide when I do this. First piece face up, second piece face down, but on top of the first piece. So I can see my number two, so that's how it should look. Okay, let's get started. I may choose to lengthen my stitch a little bit. Right now I'm at 2.5. I might go up to um, 2.75. If it is really um, having a hard time getting through, I could move it up to 3.0. I'm not gonna go any higher than that. get to the end of my row, cut off the thread. You will see on the back that I now have a quilted line. Gotta love that. Mm -hmm. Two things at once. Yep. I bring this open and it will now cover the area that was marked for the second piece of fabric. You can iron it. I tend not to. I make sure that my fabric is very well pressed before I sew it. So that way I don't always have to take it over to the ironing board and keep pressing it. I can move things along a little faster. I want to do spot three. I take where spot one was, the first piece. I again match up the lines, right sides together, and I sew another seam. That is going to be really pretty. Isn't that nice? And then you'll notice now I have two seams in the back. You are going to continue on alternating between the sides, laying your pieces down. You'll notice with this pattern that then you switch and you start to go in this direction. Got it. Same and others follow, follow the numbers. Exactly. You might want to be cognizant of when you get to this side <laughs> you actually want to be covering your pieces so if your seams kind of got a little wonky here at the mm -hmm. edge just make sure that these pieces will cover are covering your edge it happens got it once you have completed the entire top you actually trim along these blue lines to cut out the base of the tote. Now, through the magic of television, <laughs> I have completed the entire top. 
It is a different jelly roll, as you will see, <laughs> because I did this one earlier. Uh, after I was done the sewing and I trimmed it, I actually took it over to the serger and just cleaned up the edges. You can also see what I did on the indent here. I just did some overcasting. It's just a, lar a wide zigzag stitch, just so that my pieces would all stay in place and it was gonna be easier for me to um, then complete the bag. I'll show you the other side so you can see all the quilting lines. So we're done, okay. a nice piece yep. of quilted material. <clears throat> now we're gonna actually form the tote. You are putting right sides together and you are going to sew a seam up both sides. What's the seam allowance? Quarter inch. Quarter On all inch. this is a quarter inch, I okay. think, because it's probably obviously a quilt as you go project. So mm -hmm. that's what she is doing. I'm going to reinforce this stitch at the beginning and the end. down. I'm going to do the other side. Again, reinforcing my stitch. clipped it or pinned it when I started. I did neither because <laughs> that's not how I roll. <laughs> well, you're kind of holding it well with your fingers. Yes, so. and, but truth be told, it's just... <laughs> All right, I'm going to trim some of my extra threads here. Now, Pam, I know you are going to know the name of what I'm doing, and it is escaping me right now. But to make the bottom of the bag, what's that called when you do? Isn't there like a technical bag name? Come on, Pam. I was going to say you're making depth, but I don't know whether they... Yep. So you're basically putting the side seam to what the, would be the bottom of the bag. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I am going to open that seam. Yeah, because it's going to be a lot easier to sew. And at this point, I would probably get some clips or something to really hold it together. I Oh, am I going to get some clips? Oh, Pam, thank you. <laughs> yes, I'm going to get some clips. I'm going to open up that seam so it's a little easier on the sewing of it all. And I'm going to do both sides. Again, quarter inch, reinforcing, you know the drill. If you're having a difficult time getting this all uh, under your needle, or you're having problems with feeding, then absolutely start Put your walking foot on, lengthen your stitch a little bit. Those are just some good tricks to help accommodate a lot of bulk under your needle. I'm going to do it on the other side. Again, adding a couple clips. And 
And this is where I'm glad that I put the overcasting on because it also makes it a little cleaner when you're sewing this area. So now I have Yay! a tote. Well, tote bottom, I should say. The next part of the directions is going to call for adding the binding. And they would like you to sew the binding pieces together. So I believe it's probably two jelly roll strips together, mm -hmm. as I did. Fold it in half, so now you're at one and a quarter. And you are going to sew that to the outside, and you're turning it to the inside. So that's going to mean... Mm, sewing it to the outside? Sewing it to the outside. Thank you, Pam. I had to think about that for a minute. <laughs> Turn it inside out. Well, I'm liking my little corners there. Absolutely. Yeah. Looks pretty. So I'm going to cut off the selvage. And then I'm going to take my clips. I am not going to start and stop on this edge because that's too much bulk and I don't want to get involved with where the straps are going to be attached. Again, not a great... So I am going to pick roughly the center and start there. And then I am going to use my clips this time. And I am going to clip all the way around. I'm going to trim my little pieces here. They will be covered now, but I would also like them not in the way. I'm going to um, open up my seam again. around the bag. Opening up the seam. Coming around. You'll notice I have my unfinished edge to the unfinished edge of the bag. And then I leave myself a pretty good tail so that I can work with it when I come around to join it up. If I was concerned about sewing the circle, I would raise my machine up and use it as a free arm. Mm -hmm. However, I feel like I have a lot yeah. of room with this bag, so I don't yeah. necessarily need to do that with this project. I leave myself a decent opening to start because I want to be able to join my strips. So I'm going to start down here. We good? Mm-hmm. All right. And then we're just going to sew around. Just 
watching that I'm only getting yes. parts <laughs> under the needle that I want under the needle. That happens sometimes. Yeah, if you ever hear a thunk, thunk, thunk that then you stop. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You're like, boy, this is feeling kind of bulky. Yes, because you've sewed all the parts together. kind of puffy. <laughs> and on a project like this, typically how I like to finish is I will fold that down a little bit, feed that in, and sew it right up. So let me just do a little pressing to make that happen. So I just pressed that down a little bit. I overlap it maybe an inch, maybe not quite. Trim my edge. You could um, do it on a diagonal if you think that that makes a smoother look I just nestle that in like that all right clip it a couple spots And then finish off the, the seam. Back at the beginning. Okay. Looks nice. Now they are going to tell you to fold it in, press it, and do a seam all around. Okay. So now I have pressed the seam into the lining. Not the seam, the binding, I should say. Mm -hmm. I clipped it, and now I'm going to do a, a rotation around to sew the um, binding down. Okay. And what stitch do you tend to use? Also a straight stitch? Straight stitch I'm going to use and I'm going to keep it a little long. And this might be a little hard to film because it's a lot of bolts. And you do it from the back side? As opposed to stitching the ditch? So I would stitch in the ditch, but then if I don't catch the back, oh, that's true. I'm going to be unhappy. So, <laughs> so I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch this with a quarter inch, with a quarter inch seam allowance 
It will probably give me a little tiny flap back here, Which is fine. but I won't really see it in the front yeah. and I'll be happier with the stitch. If I bind a quilt this way with this method, typically I bind from back to front. Mm -hmm. If I were to do this project again, I would probably consider um, changing the directions and doing this from back to front. Okay, I have some bulk there, so I'm kind of helping it through. This is a part, the part where I'm glad that I kept those seams open. <laughs> yep. Because <laughs> I would really be going through a lot of layers. Mm stitch in place and now voila so it does look like I caught yeah the front for the most part and in the back like I said I might have a little lip there I don't yeah. really mind that it's a bag nobody's gonna really notice it that is true it's a cute bag though it is now we were going to add some straps again i may veer from the directions and consider doing some strapping as the straps i uh, mean the cotton webbing or the, the nylon cotton webbing yeah because they do a, a really beautiful job of designing the strap which is going to look oh, like wow. this mm -hmm. but it is some bulk so okay. it depends on how much you really want to cool. um, do on your sewing. When you cut the strap out, as I said, don't throw those out. <laughs> My recommendation would be to cut either on or just a little bit in on this blue line. Okay. I left mine a little wide and it was tricky. I mean, I, I managed it, but if I were to do it again, I would um, cut this down. You take a strip off of your jelly roll, cut off the selvage, and iron down about a half inch. On the short end. On the short end, thank you. And I might have gotten a little longer than a half inch. What they want you to do with this piece of the strap do this and then fold it over. You can iron it. If you're very concerned about it staying in one place, you could take a little glue 
It's a little small for a spray basting glue. You could do a glue stick. Mm -hmm. I used just the pins and made it stay that way. I'll be honest, the, the technique here is not necessarily pretty. So you sort of just have to zhuzh it <laughs> and keep it together. Depending on how you cut this batting strip, your pieces may meet. Mine do not because my strip is just cut a little too large. So that's the first step. Okay. When you get to the end, whoop, let me just get this to the right end. You leave that half inch. Leave the half inch again. Fold it over. Obviously that's a little better than a half inch. Mm -hmm. And again, I would pin it to keep it in place, same as I did at the beginning. Okay. Step two is you take one of your jelly roll pieces, cut it to two inches. So okay. it would have been at two and a half, you're bringing it down to two. You take, oh, here it is, a 20 inch, maybe it's 30. What do they tell you to cut? 30 inch. You take a 30 inch piece of the strapping. Mm -hmm. You do the same technique. Do I have? Nope. Let me cut the selvage off. Iron down the end. I would do a thorough iron on this strapping, put it in the center. I like to put it under the tab, it covers it up. And then you fold it over. So just like you did on the other one. Exactly. Just, just a little smaller. Then you put one on top of the other. Oh, to make it look like that like that mm -hmm. and then well, clever you pin the heck out of it because <laughs> so it doesn't shift or do anything. so it doesn't shift yeah you take your time sewing it mm -hmm. i went to a 3.0 stitch width on this because stitch it length. was stitch length sorry mm -hmm. because it was there was so much bulk mm -hmm. you could do a zigzag stitch i didn't think to do that but mm -hmm. that would have also captured it nicely okay. remember you are sewing through a lot of layers okay so that's how you get from here to there for the final step in our project you need to put the handle on the directions call for you to sew the handles like this which isn't unusual on a bag and then to fold it over. But that is a lot of bulk to sew through and not what I would recommend doing at all. Because I finished my that finished edges look mm -hmm. so nice, I don't mind that they're out. So I am only going to sew, I would say approximately, it's gonna be five inches in from the, uh, from the end seam here. And then I am probably going to go about an inch and a half down, maybe two inches down. So let's see where that takes me. So there's five inches in. I like that. And then let's see where two inches take me. I like that. I am going to pin it in place. And except for the top, I am going to try to sew on the edges here. So I'm going to come down here. I am going to travel with some bulk, come up on the edge here, and complete it here. 
So I am definitely going to go to a 3 inch, 3.0 stitch length. I am going to kind of ignore the quarter inch seam allowance but rather focus on sewing in that channel that I made. Make sure I'm only sewing what I want to be sewing. Down. I'm going to do a couple stitches. I am taking my time. My needle is down. I am going to raise my presser foot. I am going to do an awful job <laughs> of forcing this under the throat. All right, needle still in there. Going to giddy up, pull my pin out. Needle down, put my foot up, switch it around again, my needle still down. Coming down the pike here, one more. give it a couple stitches in place and voila so there's the seam from the inside nice yeah that's how it looks on the and outside that, that's plenty strong enough I agree and I think that I would not have wanted to double it I think it would make the bag look a little bulky too I am going to do that on the other side as well, same placement, and then I will have my finished bag.